we are a culture historically of rights and responsibilities. And we only worry about half of that equation now. We want a cute $200,000 salary and we want it now. And who cares that I don't have the experience and who cares that I have a grading personality that would be very difficult to work with and who cares that others have put in their time in order to ascend to those positions and who care? Who cares about any of it? I'm here and I want it, so give it to me. These days, TikTok is filled with Gen Zers, and I hate to admit it, but even many of my fellow millennials who feel like they are somehow owed a six-figure job and a comfortable life simply for existing on planet Earth. These videos are kind of fun to cringe at and make fun of, but I believe they are pointing at a much deeper issue that is showing itself in all corners of society. This video went viral over the last couple of weeks, and once again, I'm going to try to be on point uh, with my sensor button. We'll see how well I do. I have a bone to pick with America. So I'm headed to my serving job. Fucking hate it. That'd be why I make more money serving. I have my literal business marketing degree that put me in a cute $80,000 in debt. And I make more serving sushi rolls because I was, I've been applying to marketing for weeks now and the, the pay cut is insane, insane. But the jobs that are like a cute 150 to 200,000 a year, I'm not getting those. I'm a 20, almost 25 year old, my birthday wow. soon, almost 25 year old chick going against, you know, corporate ass America people with so much experience. All I got is my degree. You know, people say, get your degree, but then they don't talk about how you need experience. The degree was the experience. The degree was the experience. Oh man. There are, there's so much about this. Number one, when I talk about money from now on, I will only use the adjective cute. Wow. Um, how much? How much is that bagel? Oh, it, it's a cute four fifty. Uh, I just uh, I just played this gig. I got paid a cute four hundred dollars. Um, obviously, just cringe, and we could take apart every single part of this. But what's important for you to know, if you're normal and you understand how life works, um, this this sentiment, while crazy, is also prevalent. And there is this idea that we are owed something. Uh, Confucius is believed to have said, I hear and I forget. I see and I remember, I do and I understand. She said, I, I can't get a $200,000 job even though I've been to college and I have the degree and the degree is the experience. Confucius says, I hear and I forget. I, I sit in, in lectures in my business marketing class and I, and I hear it and I forget it. I see it and I remember, I actually see it in, in action. Maybe this is an, an internship or an apprenticeship where you actually get to see it happen. I do it and I understand. I put the weight of it on me and I understand. I have actual responsibility and I understand. Um, there, there, is no, there is no substitute for actual real lived experience. The other idea is, I like that she won't tell her age. I'm like a 20 to 25 year old chick is what she says. Uh, such a mystery. You know, I'm going to guess 21, um, but 20 to 25 year old. I'm going to hope 21 based on the maturity level here. I'm like 20 to 25. This is also always how I'm going to tell my age. I'm somewhere between like 27 and 47. That's, that's how I'm going to wow. tell my age. I'm like a cute 30 something. <laughs> uh, I hear and forget. I see. And I remember I do. And I understand Proverbs 19 says desire without knowledge is not good. And whoever makes haste with his feet misses his way. Experience does actually matter. And this gets to the deeper root of why so much of Gen Z and younger millennials feel like, look, I did my four years in college. Someone hand me $200,000 a year. Um, you know, I, I'm here. I exist. S somebody hand me a comfortable life. Um, it's because we no longer view society like the thing we live in. We no longer view society as something that we belong to and have responsibility toward. We now see society as something that is meant solely to serve us. And that is new 
in the scope of human history. There is a, a great sociologist who broke down human history into these different categories. There was like primitive man who basically just worried about survival. Um, out of that, there was uh, religious man who saw themselves, this is about your view of yourself, saw themselves as belonging to their larger spiritual community and having responsibility towards them. Then the industrial revolution brought us industrial man, which saw yourself with a responsibility to your community, to the broader world with the product or services that you were offering and to your family and your friends as a contributing member of society. And now we have moved into the category of psychological man. And this is a change within all of human history. Uh, primitive man and religious man and industrial man, they all viewed their identity from the outside in. I belong to a society. I have responsibilities to a community, and that informs who I am and my identity. Psychological man sees themselves from the inside out. And now society and the community around us, our family, friends, our cities, states, and countries, it's not something we have a responsibility towards. It's not something we carry weight for. Now we think from the inside out. Society is something that's supposed to be pointed at me and focused on me and serving me and me only. In Ecclesiastes, uh, Solomon shares this insightful, sometimes depressing wisdom. In Ecclesiastes 9.11, he says, I've seen something else under the sun. The race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. Nor does food come to the wise or wealth to the brilliant or favor to the learned. But time and chance happen to them all. You can be the best, the brightest, the most degrees, the most brilliant, the most influential, and things still might not go your way. There is time and there is chance and there is circumstance. There is need for patience. And ultimately the idea that we have responsibility to others is rooted in our responsibility toward God. However, we've replaced worship of God with worship of the self, which means we've replaced responsibility towards God with others being responsible to us. We are a culture historically of rights, and responsibilities. And we only worry about half of that equation now. We want a cute $200,000 salary and we want it now. And who cares that I don't have the experience and who cares that I have a grading personality that would be very difficult to work with. And who cares that others have put in their time in order to ascend to those positions. And who cares? Who cares about any of it? I'm here and I want it. So give it to me. I'm psychological man. I view my identity entirely by what's inside of me. I don't worry about my place in society. I don't worry about the community around me. And I don't worry about my responsibility to others. The call to come and to follow after Jesus is a call to deny yourself. And I think obviously that's mattered for 2000 years. Jesus gave that command 2000 years ago. It matters maybe more than ever today because for primitive man and religious man, an industrial man is these categories of self-identity. We had to deny ourselves, but we already saw ourselves as responsible to others. For psychological man, we are only ourselves. We are each man an island completely forming our identity psychologically from within ourselves. To deny ourselves is one of the greatest calls because we believe that we have our own truth and our own identity and our own reality and our own morality. We can just come up with all these things whole cloth and Jesus says, you must deny yourself. You got to get out of your own head. You got to realize who you are in respect to the people and community around you and deny yourself and take up your cross. This is a call to intentionally suffer for the good and the sake of those who are around you. It is a call to get your eyes off of yourself and to get your eyes on the people around you and to live like Jesus, giving your life away for the benefit of others, even at great cost to yourself. Society is not built just to help you and just to make you succeed and just to fulfill your every wish. Society is there for you to have an impact on with the God-given gifts and purposes that are inside of you. If you enjoyed this clip, make sure you check out the full podcast and subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with all new content. You can also support the channel at patreon.com slash Clayton Tyner. Link is in the description below.